Peace everyone, Unmask Art here, and today I'll be showing you five of the best ways to improve your artwork. Alright everyone, starting with number five. The very first thing that you want to do is you want to plan your work. This is the very first thing that you should do. If you skip this step, it's the wrong choice to make. So there's a few things to think about when you are planning your work. The first thing I would say most important is composition. The second is colors. What colors do you think that you're going to use in the piece? Third, style. What style are you looking for? Are you doing realistic? Are you doing anime? Are you doing something like that? It's important to think about what style that you're, that you're trying to approach. And then stemming from the composition, the next thing to think about is what's gonna be in the background and what's gonna be in the foreground. It's a, always a really good idea to think of these layers in your work as completely separate entities and plan each layer individually. And the last thing is find references. I don't know how much time I spend looking for references when I'm doing a piece, especially when it's working on something that I haven't done before, which seems to be the most common thing that I do. So when you're planning your work, Think of these five things right here. I know it's kind of a lot, but planning goes a long way, and I do not touch pencil to paper without first planning. All right, moving on to number four, and this is measure twice, cut once. What I mean by this is to sketch your drawing more than one time. Don't go from a sketch on your piece of paper to pushing your final draft onto the same piece of paper. You can use more than one piece of paper. I know it's mind-blowing to think of using more than one, one piece of paper, but I can assure you that it is very beneficial. When you do your initial sketch, maybe you look at it and you sketch it, and for this example, I'm going to draw a, a bell pepper, okay? And I look at I look at my sketch and I think hmm, it's a pretty good sketch, but this this doesn't look much like a bell pepper. It kind of looks like a lumpy pumpkin, and I don't want to start erasing it and and trying to fix my lumpy pumpkin into a pepper. So what do I do? I'm just going to sketch it again. And so that's what I do. And I look at this sketch and I was like, okay, it looks a lot less like a lumpy pumpkin. However, it's a bit too tall. It's not the it's not the look that I'm going for. Okay, so I'll sketch it one more time. And this is what I'll get. And finally, you know, after the third, maybe even the second, it could even be the first sketch. Just just sketch it out, try it a few different ways, and you'll get your desired result eventually. You know, even a broken clock works twice a day. So if you're not the best artist, if you just sketch it more than once, your hand will start to remember what it needs to do to get the look that you're going for. And in this case, this is the kind of bell pepper I want. Uh, just a normal looking everyday bell pepper, not a lumpy pumpkin and not a super tall skinny bell pepper. So once you have your final draft, this, this goes on to number three. So this is officially number three. And this is correct yourself. Now, when you look at one of your drawings, you can see when something's off. You look at a drawing that you're doing, and maybe you don't even know what it is. You just look at it, and you think, there's just something wrong with it. Just, just pause. If you see, if you feel like there's something wrong with it, it's because there's something wrong with it. So when I look at my 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 final sketch of my bell pepper, and I look at it, and I'm like, I, I, I don't know what it is, but there's something off with it. And if you can't see it, just ask somebody. Just ask somebody, hey, do you see anything strange about this or something off? And they can help correct you. And in this case... I can clearly see what the problem is, is this tumor uh, at the bottom growing all awkward and weird. So just erase it 
and fix it. Take the time to fix it. And, and just because, it, and when you're sketching, don't draw so dark. You know, you don't need these these super dark, ridiculous lines that you can't erase. It's just a sketch. Don't get all excited about it. So yes, correct yourself. You know there's something wrong, so fix it before you move on to the next step. You see, I see this problem a lot when people draw hands. They they know there's something wrong with their hands. All right, now that you have your final draft of your sketch, you can start to move on to your ap your actual final draft, your finishing piece that you want to do. If you're going to do a serious drawing in, of any kind, make sure you do it on, on real paper, not flimsy, cheap computer printout paper that you can get 500 sheets for a dollar. If you're buying your paper 500 sheets for a dollar, you're drawing on the wrong paper. I can guarantee you that. So the best way and the way that I like to use to get my final sketches onto my final draft paper without having a bunch of sketch lines and eraser marks and all that other nonsense that you hate to deal with when you're trying to draw something good. And when you are sketching, I recommend using a 2B pencil. It's smooth on the paper, it's somewhat easy to erase, and you don't have to press hard in order to get the picture to show up. So that's just a quick tip. 2B pencils for sketching. Anyways, so this technique I call backtracing. And basically, after you have your sketch, flip your paper over, just take your pencil and do this with it. Right over, your, right over the back of your subject. Make sure you have all of your subject covered. Now this is just a sketch piece, so who cares what you do on the back of it? After you do that, one of the best things about doing it this way is you can lay it out on your final piece any way that you want without having to try to sketch it on there and or anything like that. Or grid lines. If, if you used a grid to draw a portrait or something like that, um, and you have your grid lines on this sketch piece of paper, and you have all your lines that you would use for your sketch before you erase your, before you start erasing your grid lines. Don't erase grid lines. Just do it on a sketch piece of paper, draw your outlines and things like that. Position it correctly with composition in mind. Don't forget composition. So lay it out wherever you want it. If you want, you can tape down the edges. If it's a, there's a lot of detail and the paper might move around, but basically you just take your pencil, trace your sketch where you want the lines to show up. It doesn't take that long to trace an image. And then there you go. You have your lines. They're super light. The, those are the easiest erased lines in the world. You can't get lighter than that. And it took almost no time at all. And the best part, if, if you don't like it, just erase it and you can reposition it and you can do this an infinite amount of times. All right, so from here, I'm just gonna quickly time-lapse the drawing of this bell pepper and I will discuss the final two ways to improve your artwork. Alrighty then, so here is my bell pepper, and as you can see, it is awful. And part of the reason is what brings me to the second way to improve your artwork, and that is to add contrast. You see, this bell pepper is pretty much all one value of gray, and it really diminishes the depth and three-dimensional quality of the drawing that I'm trying to complete. A lot of beginner artists would actually look at this and think, you know, I did a really good job on this bell pepper. And it's a good drawing, but as far as a completed piece of work, it's pretty awful. I mean, if you took it to your mom, she'd probably say, oh, that's really good, sweetie, good job. Well, your mom is wrong because this drawing doesn't have any value to it. And I don't mean the amount of money somebody would buy but the contrast from the darkest part of the image to the lightest part of the image. Now, I'm working from a reference photo, which I highly recommend you doing if you're doing still life or portrait or something like that. And I can just simply look at the reference photo and see that, okay, well, this part of the bell pepper is, it's nearly black, and this part is nearly white. But 
there's not a lot of difference between this part and this part right now because this part of the bell pepper is so light. It's such a light gray. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you how different it will look once I add real value and real contrast to this same exact image. I sketched this really fast. It only took about five minutes to do. So now I'm going to add the value and then I will talk about the number one way to improve your artwork. So there you have it, just adding more value, darkening the darkest spots, lightening the lightest spots. You can see that it looks tremendously better and much more advanced as far as somebody who drew that. If you saw this drawing, you wouldn't think, oh, that must be a beginner artist. Now, with all that said, it brings me to the number one way to improve your artwork. It is the most overlooked an underappreciated aspect of what it takes to be a good artist, and that is patience. And I don't mean patience with practice after hours and hours and hours. What I mean, patience while working. This drawing took 10 minutes at the most. It, it took me 10 minutes to lay this down. I was not taking my time. I was rushing through to get it done. And I did that on purpose because the last step of what I'm going to do for this video is I'm going to show you what patience does to work. And we're going to see how much more realistic and good I can make this if just by adding a little bit of patience. The number one mistake that artists make, inexperienced artists, is they lose patience in the middle of a piece of work. And you can see this in your work if you find the spot that you began the drawing with to look really good. And then as you work down and further away from where you started, you see the quality of work beginning to fade. And that is because over time, working on the same piece, an artist will lose patience. So again, patience is the number one way to improve your artwork. There you have it everybody, proof that patience is the number one way to improve your artwork. If you're not satisfied with the way that this looks at this point, I don't know what to tell you. Anyways, I hope that you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to see more, and I'll see you next time. Take care.